Kunsang is asking, how can we reconcile the teachings on Buddha nature with the Prasangika Madhyamaka system? <laughs> Very different kind of question. Ooh. Well, I mean, again, this is really, I'm not an expert. I heard of Ken Wollstone did a wonderful lecture. So that's kind of the donkey is coming in. So I don't know, Kama, <laughs> you want to say something. Well, basically, you know, I received uh, here in Dordogne for many years, uh, explanation from Kenshin Pemashelap. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very bad student, but it's kind of clear that uh, this uh, ultimate truth, how can it be different from, you know, somehow fundamentally different from the Buddha nature, that phenomena are devoid of intrinsic existence. Maybe the luminous aspect is not emphasized as much as in the third turning, but uh, there's for sure no contradiction. And uh, in a way, even when you practice the great perfection, we say that the, 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 you have to lay the foundation with the view of the Madhyamika. And then from that, all the unfolding through pure vision, through devotion, to seeing the ultimate nature of mind, the luminous aspects comes in of the Ajayana teachings. But in no way you sort of, uh, sort of part the understanding of the Madhyamika, of course. And also, the, when Nipan Moshe said the ultimate description of reality is the union of emptiness and appearance, I mean, this uh, perfectly resumes my very limited understanding. But, you know, karma has been done extensive study also with Kenshin Pemashira, I think. So after the donkey, yeah. let's see the stallion. <laughs> Not at all. I'm the donkey here. Uh, but I think uh, uh, Matthew and I, we approach this uh, topic from the same sort of angle in a way because of our um, uh, our close uh, connections to people like Kenshin Pema Sherap and many other Nyingma masters. I did study in the Geluk tradition as well and have some Kaju masters. But I think on the whole, among most of the uh, great scholars and uh, practitioners of Tibet, there's really no tension between Buddha nature and Prasangika Madhyamika. In fact, Buddha nature is both luminous and empty. That there is that union of emptiness and appearance, um, which doesn't this go against the Prasangika Madhyamika tradition. Uh, there may have been Prasangika Madhyamika tradition uh, scholars, masters of that tradition who didn't accept an absolute Buddha nature. But I think uh, on the whole, Prasangika Madhyamika uh, tradition also you know, accepts the luminosity of the mind you know, when it comes to the nature of mind. And that luminosity is by nature also empty. So uh, there's definitely no uh, real tension and uh, particularly seeing it from the Nyingma perspective. And uh, in fact, when, the, when you deal with Dzogchen, uh, masters like Mipam would say that in order to master Dzogchen or Ati Yoga, you need to first master Prasangika Madhyamika. So they in fact are very closely linked instead of having any uh, differences or uh, tensions. Yeah, and especially when Kenshin Pemashera taught extensively the Umagien commentary of Lama Mipam Ramushe, and which was uh, Wilson translated as the ornament to the middle, I forgot exactly the title in English, the ornament to the middle way. So he really reconciled all the, the views of the, the practice, you know, being based on the mind on this school that sees everything as display of the mind and the pure aspect and the, the empty aspect has been the prasangika and reuniting all those different trends uh, as non-contradictory. So, you know, so anyway, I cannot express it very well. Who then has many other commentaries, uh, you know, and teachings on the nature of mind. So this is, nothing contradictory. And so that's why it's so important to see the Buddha teachings as non-contradictory and all leading to the same goal and having ultimately the same intention, which come back uh, to what I mentioned at the beginning of the first pronouncement of the Buddha. I found a truth that is profound, luminous, and compounded and beyond concept. And that's all leads to that. 
through different steps. You know, because we used to say in the beginning, you cannot give solid food to a newborn baby. And then later, as we our understanding and realization grow, then we can accept bigger views and more profound views and have also an experiential direct experience of what it all, all that means. <laughs>